In this video, I'll show you how to build an image control component in Angular which will allow your users to crop their photos to their liking before they are uploaded to the server. So let's select a photo here. Let's say we select this, but it's too big. So we're just going to crop it further so that we can get a nice frame for the person's head. And then we're going to do done and we get this nice photo and it can be uploaded to your server. This ensures that the photos are in the correct aspect ratio and sizes. So they take up the least amount of space on your server. So let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that we need to do here is to create a new Angular standalone project. And we can do that with ng new standalone. And we're also going to add the inline styles and the inline templates parameter to it. Great. The next thing we need to do is to add our two packages that we need for this. So the first package will be ng add angular material and the ngx image cropper package. We'll use the material dialog from the angular material and the image cropper from the ngx image cropper package and combine them to build this feature. Next, let's create two components. Uh, the first one would be image control. So we're going to do ngc and we're going to put everything in a components folder. We're going to call it image control. Great. You can see our component has been created. Similarly, we're going to create another component. This one will be for the cropper dialog itself. We're going to call it cropper dialog and we can see we have it here. Great. Great. So let's start with the app component. Let's go in our app component and first add a toolbar. So we will import angular material toolbar and the toolbar module, toolbar module like this. And then we're going to add this to the template. So let's create a matte toolbar here and give it a color of primary and let's just give a title of angular image cropper create and let's add a div below this with a class of container and for the style of the container we're going to give a slight padding of 24 pixels to make it look good great now within this div we are going to add our image control component but first let's add something to that image control component so something shows up on our ui so let's go to our image control component and let's start by adding two inputs to the image control component now we want to make this image control component configurable so that you can crop the image to whatever width and heights that you want so we are going to give two inputs here one would be the width and the other would be the height now since we want to use this width and height in different places for example in the template and in generating the placeholders so we would like both of them to be stored in signals so that we can use the reactivity power of signals so we're going to create some signals here we're going to uh, call it image width this we're going to make into a signal let's give an initial value of zero the same thing we are going to do image height be a signal as well initial value of zero and then for the input we are going to convert it a setter with width and the value would number and inside of this we can do Im this dot image width dot set well the same thing we're going to copy it here for the height i'm going to make this height and we're going to make this image height great so let's then first add a div here in our image control component and use the image uh, width that is passed on in the component to set its style so we're going to add style dot width and we're going to give it image width and unpack the value remember we need to do this for signals now inside of this we will need the image element that will show our placeholder image and the actual actual image when it is selected okay so what do we show in the image at this point so since we don't have the image as yet we can just add the placeholder for now and so let's create a computed here by using the image width and the height to generate a special placeholder for those dimensions now to generate the placeholders what we can do is that we can use a pretty nifty service that we have available here at placehold.co and basically you can just use this url and set the size that you need and it's going to give you a placeholder like this so we'll just copy this this and we are going to use this to create a computed sig computer signal here which derives from our image height and image width signals so pretty simple we're just going to return a string here and within the string we can just paste this and instead of 600 here we can paste in this dot image width and instead of 400 here we can just put in this dot image height and now whenever the image width and the height will change the placeholder is going to be calculated again and this placeholder we can keep in the source of the image for now great next we also uh, know the width and the height of the image itself because we want to have the same dimensions that were passed in so here we're going to give the height of the image as the image height and the width of the image as the image width now one more thing that we missed out here was the style dot width to be in pixels so we just need to do plus pixels here okay so the image uh, is set up with the placeholder and now let's test this out initially just to see how this looks so we are going to go in our app component and we're going to add the image control component here but before that we need to import it in our component so we're going to do image control component here and inside of it we can do image control uh, now in the newest angular version i think in 16 angular 16 we can also have self-closing blocks here or self-closing components here so we can use this nice syntax and reduce our 
code here. Okay, so for the width, we can give 200 pixels and for the height, we can give 200 pixels as well. Great. So now let's test this out and see how it looks. Great. So you can see we have our placeholder in place of the app image control and it shows up fine. So now let's add a button as well here in the image control component, which is going to allow the user to upload or to select the image. And to do that, first we have to import the matte button module and also add here. Okay. So the matte button has been imported. And after the image, we're just going to add a button here. So this will be a matte raised button so that we can get that nice material styling. And we're just going to say select photo. Let's see how this looks. Okay. So this looks fine, but we need to add a bit of styling. So let's add a bit of styling now to make this a bit better. And for the styles, what we're going to do is we are just going to give some rounded shape to the image itself so that it looks a bit better. So we are going to give a slight border radius of five pixels to the image. And then for the whole diff that we have, we want to make it into a display flex with a flex direction of column and a gap of 16 pixels. Great. So now the button matches the dimensions of the photo itself. And this looks nice. One more thing, last touch that we need to add is just to add the matte elevation class, which comes bundled in with uh, the angular material library to give that nice pop to the image itself. Great. So now the image control component looks nice. Let's move on to the cropper dialog component. So let's go to the cropper dialog. The first thing that we need to do here is to define the two data types for the cropper dialogs input and the cropper dialogs result. So here we're going to export a type called cropper dialog data. This will have the image, which will be basically the file that we send from our file input. Then we will have the width and the height. Be a number, be a number as well. Then what would be the result? Now our uh, image cropper library, it gives us two parts of the results. The first result would be our blob, which is of type blob, which we can use to upload to our server when we get it and then we'll have the url as well so that we can show that blob wherever we want before it is being uploaded to the server so let's keep it as string great so now that it's done we need to use that data inside of our cropper dialog component so the first thing uh, we are going to do then is inject the mat dialog data here so we're going to do data is equals to inject mat dialog data let's import it from the angular material dialog great and we know the type for this data so we are going to call it cropper dialog data. Okay, so we get the data for the dialog. Now, how do we store the data returned by the cropper? So for that, we will add a new signal, which we are going to call as result. This will be a new signal and the type here would be cropper dialog result or it could be undefined initially when there's no result yet. And in the initial value, we're going to do fine. Great. Okay, so now we need to uh, see what to show in the dialog itself. But first, we need to import our image cropper dialog and the material dialog because we want to use it here. So we are going to import the image cropper here. To do that, we first need to import it here. JX image cropper. And then we also need to import and you can import it now here in uh, image cropper module. And here we can also import the matte dialog module. Great. Now let's add the template for our dialog. So the first thing that we need to do here is to add the heading and here we are we're going to give a directive of the mad dialog title which comes in with the material dialog itself. We're going to call it please crop your food. Then we're going to add a div which will be the mad dialog content. Here we're going to have our image cropper component and lastly we will have our div containing our action buttons. And here we're going to have two buttons, cancel and done. So the first button would be something like this. This would be a matte raised button. We can call it cancel here. Let's just copy this here. We can do it done here. Let's call this as primary. Okay. And then we'll also use the matte dialog close directive or property so that we can uh, declaratively specify what should happen when the material dialog is closed using this button. So uh, when we hit cancel, we just want to send false. This will herald that we don't have any data for uh, the image control component. But when we have data, for example, here, we are going to send the value of the result signal. This will be the last result that has been saved in the sig grid. So this looks nice. Now let's move on to the meat of the application, which is adding the image cropper itself. So let's add the image cropper here. Now this image cropper has quite a lot of properties. So some properties that we need to add initially is to add the image file. So the first thing is to add the image file itself. This has to be a format of file or blob. So we have it in our data as image. Great. Then we, we will need to do maintain aspect ratio because we want our aspect ratio to be maintained and that is a, one of the purposes of this 
image cropper. And then what aspect ratio should the image cropper component use? Let's give it here. And this will be data dot width divided by data dot height. Simple enough. And then lastly, we would need to add the image cropped event hand, something like this. Now, when is this image cropped called? This is called whenever you, whenever you move around the cropper handle and whenever you resize it, whenever you do anything to the box, the crop box that appears. So this will be called multiple times when you are just uh, adjusting thing in your image. So what do we want to do here? We just want to set the result each time we make some modification. Great. So let's add a event handler for this called image crop. The type would be image cropped event. And let's get the two important things that we need from our event. The first is the blob and the second is the object URL. And before setting to the result, we will make sure that the blob and the object URL are present so that our result is well formed otherwise it's not going to set the result so let's just set the result to blob and image url should be the object url great great so this should work fine let's see how it does so to completely set this up what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the image control component and it's time now to add an input field so that we can get our image file so this input field would be the type would be file and also this will be hidden because it doesn't look that nice and we are just using this button to trigger this uh, input field so that we can get that no nice selector that we that will allow us to select the image okay now so this has a change event handler and we want to add an event handler to this great so before adding the event handler what we also want to do is we want to add a template variable to the end now we want this because we want to trigger the click for this when we click on select photo so what we're going to do is we're just going to do input field dot click this is going to trigger the click on this input field and it's going to open up the selection box that we need also apart from the change event we also need a click event just to cover up a bug that i found when we select the same file consecutively so to do that what we do is we just clear the value on each click so that the change event is fired all the time okay okay so let's set up the file selected event handler now okay so for the file selected event handler we're gonna give an event the type is not very clear so i'm going i'm gonna give any here and here the first thing is we want to get the file this we can get from event.target.files and we're just going to get the first one of course we then need to check if the file is valid if there is some selection there's no selection we don't want to do anything so if there is a selection we want to open the dialog and send in the image to it okay so once we are sure that the file is valid we need to show the uh, proper dialog that we created and to do that first we need to inject our dialog here so let's inject mat dialog let's inject mat dialog here and let's also add the import of mat dialog module here great now all we have to do is to open the dialog here so we're going to keep a reference to the dialog reference so that we can use it later and we're just going to do this dot dialog dot open the proper dialog component and while opening we also need to send the data that is required for this dialog remember the data was the image first of all which would be the file that we get the width which would be the image width signal the height which would be the image height signal and that's it one more thing that we would need to send is the width now we want the initial width to be at least 500 pixels so that the dialog looks good and it has space to select things great so this opens the dialog now what should happen when the dialog is closed so how we handle this would be dialog reference dot after closed and we need to subscribe to it but before subscribing let's also add a pipe and a filter which is going to check whether the result we get is true or not now this we do so that we can handle the cancel case of the dialog so now that we know that the dialog result is valid we can simply set this result to a signal now which signal should we set this to we don't have a signal for this yet so let's create a new signal here called the cropped image okay so this will be a new signal and it will have the type of proper dialog result or it could also be undefined initially and initially we are going to give it an undefined value so then in the end and this we are just going to set the cropped image value to this result that great okay so now let's test this out and now when we test this out can click on select photo here and we can just select the same guy here and we can select its photo and you can see the buttons are a bit funny here so we need to import the angular material module here but let's click on done here and you'll see that you don't get anything here so this is the main problem so first let's go back to the proper dialog again and just add the import the mat button module here this is at least going to show our buttons properly now you can see again that you can see the buttons are looking nice now the second thing is that we don't see anything here and that is because remember that we put in the placeholder as the image source for the image here now we don't need this anymore we want to show the image the cropped image as well so we need to add more conditions 
for the image source here so what we're going to do here is to add a new computed and now here you can see the power of signals again so let's add a computed here again and this can contain our logic to show the image source now the logic will be something like this if we do have a cropped image then we are just going to return the cropped image dot image url here okay and if this is not here we are just going to return the placeholder as we do right now so you can see how easy it is to build computed or derived values from existing signals here so now when you go up here you can just replace placeholder with image source and now let's test this out okay so let's select the same photo again and let's see we're going to click done here and now we can see our image source appears fine great so now one last thing that we need to see is to check the image size now to do that you will first need to inspect things a bit now if you go in my developer tools here and you inspect this image which is the final image that we got we can see here that this image the height is 200 and width is 200 but this is the height that shows up on the screen what is the real height and the real width of that so to see that we can just copy this and we can just see this here and you can see the height and width is pretty big now we don't want these huge size and uh, dimension files to be uploaded to the server and we need to prevent this from happening so what do we do there is a special property that we can add to the cropper here if we go in our cropper dialog here and this image cropper we can add a property here called resize to height and here in the height we can do data dot height and then we can do resize to width data dot width now i'm assuming that you would need the same height and width that the user passed into this control but in case you don't you can use any other height that you would want um, to be uploaded to the server great so you have resize to height resize to width now let's test this out again okay so let's do this again and we can see now we can select this again and this is the big photo that we had we can select a part of it we click done on it and now when we check this and check this check this blob out or we can see the data here uh, as well you can see that the rendered size is 200 by 200 and this is the only size we don't have an intrinsic size here Let's also check it out separately and you can see here that the size is 200 by 200 pixels. Great. So now your image is more suitable to be uploaded on your server. Great. So the last thing that we need is just to add an output to our image, uh, image control component so that the consumer of the image control can get the blob data and can pass it on to the server to be uploaded. So to do that, let's add an output here. And in this output, we're going to call this image ready. This will be a new event emitter of the type blob and we can use the concept of an effect in the signals new signals api we can create an effect in which we can listen for the cropped image so whenever we get a new cropped image from the cropper dialog we can simply output it back to our parent component this dot cropped image dot blob now just to recall with signals whenever the cropped image is going to change this this effect is going to fire so essentially it's going to emit the image ready event whenever the cropped image signal changes and that is what, exactly what we want okay and then let's go to app component uh, dot ts and let's add the image ready event here add an image ready handler here and let's just test this out by using a console.log great now let's test this out and see how this looks so when we select an image now the same image and we crop it out we can see that the blob goes back to the parent component and then you can upload it to your server and do whatever you want with it subsequent great so i hope you like this video on how to create an angular image cropper component and i've specifically not added any image upload features to it so that i can show you exactly how this component can also upload uh, images to firebase or some other service because the implementation can vary uh, but in the next video i'll try to come up with a sort of an integrated way where we can uh, make sure that the component automatically uploads the image to firebase and you can just get back a url that you can use in your in the rest of the form so watch out for that video thanks for watching and if you have not subscribed, please subscribe to my channel for more such videos. Thanks for watching.